6.45. Let's do things a little bit differently. World AIDS Day this morning. Uh, listen, we have the regular start your day on 959 this morning. And today, starting her day on 959, she's an entrepreneur, NGO queen, and inspiration personified. Sibule le sibaka noma nom. Nom Kang. <laughs> Yo, hey, this weekend names. Yes, it's showing me flames. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Night by Nine Breakfast. Absolutely. So, so uh, listen, um, your life is truly magical. Important question to kick us off, right, in this conversation that's unfolding here. Do you think your life would be the way it is today if it hadn't been the way it was when you were 16 because something happened yeah. and your life changed yeah i mean that's an incredible question because i've often battled with answering that yeah because i know very well it wouldn't have been yeah it wouldn't have been the the course that my life went on was really just um a situation of one event after another happening to mm. lead me to where i am today mm -hmm. um if if my life hadn't gone the way that it did, it certainly would have been some really boring life in Cape Town, mm -hmm. daddy's little girl, mm -hmm. um, probably in some profession I really don't like, mm -hmm. um, wanting to please my father, which wouldn't have been a bad idea, but certainly I would not have done any of the things that I've done. What is it that happened when you were 16? So when I was around 9, 10, my, my mom passed away. Mm -hmm. um, a very confusing time in my life because you know, when you're young, you kind of think your parents will live on forever. Of course. You have no recollection or like any idea of what death and, and what it means, you know. Um, but because I had an amazing dad, who, he kind of stepped in. Um, mm. But he, after a couple of years when I was 16, he too passed away. Mm. Um, and I've had to battle, at the time, battle with not having parents, but most importantly at the time, battling with the fact that they died from AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, I didn't find that out. Nobody sat me down. Nobody mm -hmm. told me what was going on. Um, I found, I found out in a taxi, um, a, a, a taxi full of people to, ah, talking about, really? yeah, parents. talking about my parents. So, I mean, you know, it, 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 you all get on the same taxi. You all know each other. In Dabazabad, in Dabazabad, in so there were two mamas mm. talking in, in in the taxi about you know the funerals we've had. You know how big or small they are. You know how it, mm. it, those those things used to go. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I heard my surname, and I was like, mm. "What? I, yeah, it mm. it, it, it wasn't cool." You've traveled around the globe and consequently was headhunted by Richard Branson. Yes. To head up uh, the corporate social investment department uh, for the Virgin Group in South Africa. Yes. We're going to talk about that, unpack that in a bit, cool. yeah? Sure. Hey man, what an interesting human being we have in studio with us this morning. Uh, keep your ear glued to the speaker wherever you are. 959 Breakfast on the street, on the air. 654, we're hanging out with Sibulele Sibaka, a Duke University fellow in the US and has traveled the world speaking to people like late President Nelson Mandela, Bill Clinton, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, both uh, Kofi Annan, my lifelong crush. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Oh, cool. man. Yes. I think I didn't know at the time how amazing he was. No, he's incredible. So that helped. Oh my it kept gosh. Me in check. But don't say the same thing about Kagami now. Uh, you've spoken to Brad Pitt and many others, all my crushes actually. <laughs> Remove Bill there, both Bills. The Clintons not crushing on them. Mandela not crushing on him. But Kofi Annan, Brad Pitt, bring girl, it any day. Any, any day. <laughs> 655. Now, your teachings are centered on tackling young women's issues, yeah. entrepreneurship, and empowering people to embrace life challenges yeah. as opportunities for growth and self discovery. Your parents died of AIDS. Yes. Um, you were orphaned yes. at the age of 16. Yes. Finally, yes. your mom departed Earlier planet on. Earth. Yeah. Earlier on, when yeah. you were nine, you yes. said, yeah. hey, yeah. 16, your dad followed suit. Yes. And uh, here you are. Here and, and here I am. And yeah. so my biggest thing has been around, I don't want any other adolescent girl or young woman to go through what I went through. Yeah. Often, too often, um, families think that um, 
we're too young to understand mm -hmm. and nobody mm -hmm. should sit us down and, and, and fill, it, fill us in on the picture and what's going on and mm -hmm. I often speak to parents as well and some your children actually know a lot more than you do mm -hmm. um, you can draw a lot of strength for you from your kids and I really hope my dad I really wish that my dad would have you know trusted me a little bit more mm -hmm. I, I, I know he was protecting me I know he was doing what he thought was best he knew that he was going to die mm -hmm. I mean he cashed in our educational policies at some point just to stay alive because sure. um, antiretroviral treatment was not free at the time yeah. This were early 2000s and so yeah, it was kind of weird years it was for really HIV weird AIDS i mean yeah and that's, those why, times, and that's yeah. why i get all touchy uh, and mm. triggered when um someone doesn't want to take one pill for free you know and i'm just like i there was a time i knew all my dad's 16 pills every single mm -hmm. day by mm -hmm. breakfast lunch and supper uh, different colors and shapes and sizes of course um and so um you knew we, his pills come, but you I, didn't you didn't know what they were i for. did not know what they were for Good i grief. just before we were going to school i would set out the breakfast ones um and i i kind of felt it was cool it was like a cool exercise mm. for me and my dad to do and at lunchtime he'd take his pills and at nighttime i knew exactly which pills they were um so yeah so then don't you maybe it was his way of waiting for you to ask what are these pills for didn't you have that moment i mean of course i did and he didn't say hiv he didn't say hiv he said he was sick oh, you know and i could oh. see he was sick right mm. um he had lost an incredible amount of weight um he was no longer energetic oh. um his memory would come and go oh. uh, so it was it was difficult i could see that but i still didn't think he was going to die Mm. Yeah, know. of course we never yeah, think. We, yeah, we, we are, yeah, we are eating pills here. We are good, um, and also how he then took out that frustration on me and and boys and how he was ex extremely strict. He wouldn't allow so me he to. He was projecting. He was projecting. I think mm. he knew. He just back of his head is like, I'm leaving this little girl here. I don't know what to do. Um, so when you say so yeah. he was taking his frustrations out on you, in which ways? I mean, he was. I mean, and I think a lot of our parents really smacked us back then. Oh, yeah. I, 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 but I just felt like mine was a little extra. Yeah. You know, um, I wasn't allowed to have boy friends, friends. you know. And not like um, dating. Not dating. But I just was like male friends. Male friends, friends yeah. from the neighborhood, from I church. Guess. It was a huge thing. And he kept saying to me, I don't want you to end up like, it, like, like the bad girls in the street. And I'm just sure. like... Only to find out that he infected my mom. So I with battled HIV. with HIV and I battled with the fact that my dad was a horrible husband but an incredible father. So how did you know that it was him who infected the mom? Because your mom? I, I then later found out through through family oh. that it was my dad who had not been faithful in their marriage. Mm. Um and there was a big family meeting at some point and my mom wanted to leave. And you know how it is. Yeah, of course. We, we stay and that's another thing that I wish I could have a conversation with my mom and be like she, apparently she knew she knew before she got infected with hiv and it's tough though it's tough it's i can tough. tell you um leaving i know i know hard. i know back then too especially back, back then. then yeah it's even parents our parents yeah. of today to yeah. leave yeah. their yeah. partners Yo. that they come from so yeah. far off with yeah it's hard yeah it's yeah. absolutely hard uh unpacking uh a beautiful guest here, Sibulele Sibagda, this morning, 6.59. We're headed to top of the hour. I love how you speak so openly and so bravely about everything that you've experienced, particularly with your parents. All of a sudden, the 1st of December makes me feel so exhausted because I can't promise anyone any good behavior on my side of the fence. Oh, no. No, truly. Oh. No, truly. No, it's my birthday at month. No, at least truly. Being honest. No, truly, it's yeah. my birthday month. I turn a whole 39 on the 16th of December. That Just imagine me not behaving. During inside Pamgwabantu, in front of Pamgwabantu. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> inside. So let's get back into this amazing conversation here with you. Uh, uh, um, Sibulele. Sibulele. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've decided. Yeah. that the meaning of your life will be to impact the lives of others. Yes. Why is it so important to lift as you rise and you do this not for HIV AIDS related matters only, yeah. but business across the board, yes. right? Tell me about your work in the NGO space. So I, I do I do it, you know, because it was done for me. Mm. You know, somebody believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Somebody said mm. to me a long time ago, you're going to be okay and let me show you how. 
Mm. And so that is my mission, is that if I can show others that it's doable and it can be done, it just needs commitment um, and following your purpose, um, then that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I mean, I do it in business and I and I do it in other spheres of my life, but I absolutely love doing it in the NPO space. I like, love that. Love mm. that. For like, me. yeah, that for me is the thing. And speaking of that space, I mean, you, you're you a founder of Impact Drivers. You yes. know, you have deep experience in, and knowledge in sexual health and reproductive rights for children, yes. adolescent girls and uh, young women. And what work do you guys do at Impact Drivers, especially, I mean, looking now at the 16 days of activism of no violence against women and kids? So the work was really born because of the high n- n- rates of new HIV infections amongst adolescent girls and young women. Oh. Um, by the end of the day today, over 1,000 girls between 15 and 24 will contract HIV. No, over 1,000. Um, and so w- while we thought COVID, people are safe at home, they were not. Girls and young women were not safe at home. Um, and during this time of 60 days of activism, we've got to remember that is that while COVID was really, you know, taking over our lives for two years, HIV didn't stop. Um, and now we are stuck with the fact that we've probably taken a couple of steps back in our fight uh, against HIV pr- predominantly and then TB and malaria as well. Um, mm. and, and that's why I do the work that I do at Impact Drivers. I've got an incredible team. We work around prevention, um, treatment and management. Um, we work with over 500 girls around the country in, in four provinces. And our work is really centered around like Dineo said, it's not just about HIV, but the holistic approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, we look at academics. We look at where you want to be in your life. We look at personal development. We mm-hmm. look at entrepreneurship because girls are saying we want to make money. You keep telling us um, that that you don't want us to be sex workers. You don't want mm-hmm. us to be drug users. You don't, you know, and those are key vulnerable populations that we need to be working with. Mm-hmm. And so if we're preventing that, girls are saying, well, give us an alternative. Mm-hmm. Give us a solid, stable alternative. And that is what we are about. We are about opening up avenues to um, access to education, but also we know that not everyone wants to go, to go that route, but others want to start a business. Uh-huh. Um, and more and more, we're actually looking at girls and young women about being about the business of themselves, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, first and foremost. Uh-huh. And we're finding that they're really attracted to that. Uh-huh. Um, and I mean, really for me, all of this work was inspired um, w- when I had just finished working for Richard. And he said, whatever you do, make sure that you give back. And so in all of the business that I do, I always make sure and that, but, but it's, the NPO stuff is taking over very quickly. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Love when she that. says Richard, she means Richard Branson, Branson for those who just joined us. A hundred percent. Virgin, 100%. yes. Her name is around. Sibulele Sibaka. It is 23 minutes after 7 o'clock in the morning. We're heading to the traffic desk and we're going to be chatting more with her in a bit. Hanging out with Sibu Sibaka. What do you think your parents think oh. about how your life has turned out? <laughs> Do you know? What I is know. with all these questions, I know, though? I know, um, I know, I know. I've struggled with that, too, you know, mm-hmm. because one of the benefits one has of their parents being alive, at least till they, you know, a little bit older, mm-hmm. is that you you get to understand what they would, would like for you, mm-hmm. right? You start having those conversations. Mm-hmm. I mean, we hadn't even started, we hadn't started talking, my, my father and I, especially about me being you know a lawyer or whatever it is that i wanted to be i Mm -hmm. we didn't get there Mm -hmm. and so i don't know but i'm told that because i do a lot of global speaking right Mm -hmm. and and my mom was and so was my dad i'm told that that element would have probably sat well with them i've gone to a medium for this that's how it has really i I needed to know yeah Um, yeah i i I, I needed to know i needed to know was it okay that i spoke about you um was it okay that I spoke about your personal lives mm, um, wow. uh, mm. I, I just needed the validation that it, it was it was cool and um, I, I got it I, mm. I got it there are moments oh. every time you know once in a while where I'm like my dad was there mm. you know I, I mm. and, and so it comforts me I, I kind of feel mm. like I'm in the right space I'm doing the right thing um, they were both educators and I think smack bang I'm, I'm right in it you're right in it yeah. 100% tell me about uh, where people who need help 
from you can reach you? So we're available on social media. I'm, I really respond to DMs. You know, people often think that, uh, you know, I, I don't, but I do. So if anyone ever wants to reach out um, for a number of reasons, if, if it's not just wanting to start your NPO and you don't know how to even start accessing international funding, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm here for that. Um, but also if you have a teenage daughter that you feel like, oh my word, I'm going to kill her, mm-hmm. uh, please reach out to me. Or mm-hmm. if you're a parent and you're HIV positive and you don't know how to break the news, I'm, I'm here for you. Sounds oh. to me like you've become the kind of woman you, that was screaming inside of your mom. Yeah. I, they told me to find my inner child and yeah. I'll be okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. Yeah. And and that is what... And, and it heals me. So, so doing mm-hmm. the work that I do, I, selfishly, mm-hmm. there's a lot for me, I think, more than it does for the person I'm talking to. Who's your support structure? I find this very interesting because um, yeah. being, being yeah. orphaned, in your teenage years yeah. who was there for you post the death of your your parents my brother was incredible mm-hmm. so how old is your brother he's eight years older than me yeah um so he was still too i mean he dropped out of varsity he went out of his way to make sure i'm i'm half the woman i am because of him mm-hmm. um he he was equally orphaned um mm-hmm. but he he raised me um he he just made sure that and he asked me for two things so we can you finish school and don't fall pregnant Mm-hmm. Can you just, can you just? Did you eventually fall pregnant? No, I didn't. I'm just like, dude, can you break that? In marriage hello, even? Hello, hello. Can, where's your brother now? He's in Cape Town. He's in Cape Town. Like, please uh, untie the curse. Can you okay? please? Hello, well, I mean, we are not, waiting. Not the curse, yeah. but I mean, yeah, it's okay just the now. bond the of bond. the words. Yeah, n- now we're good. We you can know? unplow that plant that you <laughs> seeded he, years ago. Yeah, yeah. he was, he are was are incredible. You, are you looking to have kids though? I, I do, yeah. Do definitely. you find that it's an imposing question when you're asked No. in marriage leave? years later you haven't well, had kids well no so not not yeah. in I'm, I'm okay and i think i've always wanted to have kids in marriage that was a decision that i that i want you know wanted to make for of course, myself yeah of course. um th- that's what i know for me that mm-hmm. that's the structure that i i believe in um yeah. and so yeah relationships will dribble you you know uh, true story and so and so i wasn't trying to be dribbled along with my child yeah you know so yeah. As best as I could control that, I wanted to have a, a child in marriage. And so I'm waiting. Oh. It'll probably happen. Thank you it very much. It must just. It must just. It must just. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. You're Thank dynamite. you for having me. You're yeah. absolutely yeah, you're amazing. amazing. Yeah, you're ma- you are amazing. You. And good luck. You're nominated for uh, the Aurora Award 2023, right? Yeah. Well, is, did that just come out? Because I have been award- nominated before for that award. Oh, yeah. And you were nominated for it before. Yes, yes. Well, maybe I, you never I, know. Maybe, maybe you're nominated well, you again. Maybe I, 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 was told by, I was told you, by someone. All right. Maybe I'm manifesting this. I'm taking it. No, I, I, I'm taking it. I'll have it. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is Sibu Sibaka, dynamite woman she is. She started her day on 959, as did you, and you stay, right? She might be leaving, but you're definitely staying. Follow her on her socials at Sibulele underscore Sibaka. It's time for the news.